Welcome to our next lecture on joint probability distributions. In this video we're going to be focusing then on conditional probabilities of joint distributions. So as a brief review, a conditional probability is the probability of event B occurring given that A has already occurred. So it's written like this. The probability of event B occurring given that event A has already happened. So remember that example we did where what's the probability that it's going to rain given that it's cloudy, okay? So certain probabilities like this. So the formula for a conditional probability is this. The probability of B given A is the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of A. So this is the same thing now with joint distributions. It's just going to be with A being the X variables or the X random variables and event B then being the Y random variables. So let's look at an example to see how we would set this up. So we're going to go with our same cell phone example. So once again we have our number of times our city name is stated, our number of bars of signal strength, and we have all the joint probability distribution here and these then in purple are my marginal distribution. So we're going to recall this formula, the probability of B given A equals the intersection divided by the probability of A. So let's talk about just some practical things before we get into formulas. We would expect that the number of times we have to repeat our city name to be greater when I only have one bar of signal strength than at three, right? So we can look at that. So I would expect these down here to get bigger when I only have one bar of signal strength. So see how these probabilities keep getting bigger with only one bar of signal strength, okay? So with that in mind, the math way of writing that, I would expect that the probability of y equaling 1 given that x equals 3, so the probability that y equals 1 when x equals 3, so 3 bars of signal strength and only saying my name once, to be greater than the probability of one time repeating the name given that my signal strength is only a 1, okay? So I would expect this probability to be greater than this probability, which it is. So note here that there's 12 probabilities conditional on x because I have these 12 probabilities that could all be divided by my probability of x down here and 12 more that are conditional on y. So 12 more that could be divided by y, okay? So when you do these problems, I think in a way it's nice that these are all word problems because it's easier to interpret them rather than just using numbers. So as you write down a formula, so here how I wrote the probability that y equaling 1 given that x equals 3, say what that means in your head because then it will make more sense as you go. Okay, so as we get started on actually calculating these probabilities, let's remember this formula. So the first one I'm going to do is what's the probability that I only have to say the name once given that I have three bars of signal strength? So if I use this formula, I first find the intersection of when y equals 1 and x equals 3. So if I come in here, y equals 1, x equals 3, that would be 0.25. And then I divide it by the probability of just x. So the probability of just x then would be 0.55. So I calculate that out and I get 0.455. So then if I do others, the probability that I have that I have to repeat the name twice with three bars of signal strength is a little less, 0.364. The probability of saying the name three times with three bars of signal strength is a little less. Four times with three bars is about the same, or if I carried it out to more decimal points, it would be even less. So if I summed all of those up, I would get 1.001. .001. And once again, I'm, I'm truncating these last decimal points so it rounds up more than one, but normally this would be a one, okay? So even my conditional probabilities then would add up to one for each probability mass function. So this then is how we could do it on the computer. So this right here is the one we just did, okay? So this kind of shows you what I'm doing. So I would take the probability of their intersection divided by the total probability of one variable, so in this case f of x, and that would give me 0.4. So then I would absolute reference this right here and then just drag these down if I were doing it in Excel. So that then would give me the probability of each of these just so fast. So you can see then the total probability is 1. 
So then same thing over here, I could just do 0 0.02 divided by 0.25, which would give me 0 0.08. So that is the x direction. The y direction then would be over here. So I'd have 0 0.036, or f of x given y, would come from the probability of y equaling 1 given x equaling 1 divided by 0.28, which is f of y. And then once again, I could just drag those over. So then you can sum up down here to ensure that it is a probability mass function or maybe just to check to make sure you're doing it right. I always love math problems that I can check to make sure I'm doing it right because it's just an easy way to know if you're on the right track. Okay, so that was for discrete random variables. Now let's move on to continuous random variables. So we're going to have joint probability density functions. So the way we calculate conditional probability is this. So it's really a similar function, right? So the conditional probability density function looks like this. I have the joint probability distribution divided by each of my individual probabilities, okay, for all probabilities greater than zero. So given that it satisfies these conditions, which are my normal conditions, right? So probabilities greater than zero and equaling one. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. Determine the conditional probability density function for y given that x equals little x of this function. So same thing as before, as the last few videos, this k value is going to be 6 times 10 to the negative third. And another thing to keep in mind is that in order to find the conditional probability density function of a continuous random variable, I have to first find the marginal distribution of each, right? Because that's going to be my individual probabilities that I'm going to divide by in my formula. So I'm going to first find my marginal density function for when x is greater than zero. So I come in here and solve that, okay? So this is my probability density function. So once again, I just say from x being to infinity because I want it in terms of x so it can be an actual function. So there's an x in my formula, okay? So after I find the marginal density function, then I'm going to find the conditional probability, okay? So that then is just going to be my joint probability formula, which I have to start with, right? Divided by my marginal density function, okay? So relative to x. So if this were relative to y, we could then integrate this stuff relative to y, okay? So that then would be my answer, okay? So if they wanted it at a certain point, or if you were asked to do this at a certain point, you could just plug in x and y. So this formula then represents all variables between zero and infinity in both the x and y directions. Okay, so now let's talk about the conditional mean and conditional variance. So the conditional mean looks like this. So that is the expected value of y given x has already occurred, and I'm going to say y times f of y dy. So really it's not too different than what we've seen before. This one right here then is just multiplied by a conditional probability. So the conditional variance just would be sigma squared and would look like this. So similar, right? It looks very similar to what we've seen in the past. It just includes a conditional probability in the formula. Okay, so same spreadsheet as before, right? And this then is just for a discrete random variable. So for the discrete random variables below, what's the conditional mean of y given that x equals 1? So what's my conditional mean of y given that x equals 1, okay? So given that I have one bar of signal strength, what is my conditional mean of y, okay? So now I'm going to do this new section on my spreadsheet, okay? So I have the formula y times f of y given x equals 1. So I'm going to take my y values right here, and I'm going to multiply them by these values right here, which is f of y given x, okay? So we know it's y given x equals 1 because we're in this column that we did before, okay? So I'm going to take 1 times 0.05, and that gives me 0.05. And then 2 times 0.1, which gives me 0.2 or I rewrote the values here so we can go across. And then 3 times 0.1 equals 0.3, 4 times 0.75 equals 3. So then I would sum all those values up right here. So that then would be my conditional mean. So my conditional variance then 
I would do a similar thing but square my y terms to get 0.05 so I would square this right here multiply it by this and get this value square 2 multiply it by this get 0.4 so I would sum all of those up I would square my expected value I would subtract the two and that right there then would be my final variance okay so the mean number of attempts given one bar is 3.55 and the variance then is 0.7475 so that's an example on how to do a discrete random variable these all are just kind of building on each other if you notice that okay so let's look at a continuous random variable example What's the continuous mean for y given that x equals 1500? Integrate by parts. Okay, so I'm going to use the same formula I did before, but now I want to know my expected value of that formula. So I'm going to say the expected value of y given x equals 1500. Okay, and I'm going to set that equal to my function, my probability density function I found a few slides ago, times by just each y value. So with continuous random variables, when we use these formulas for expected value, I just use the variable y, okay, because it takes care of every y value. That then equals this. So if you notice, I incorporate my 1500 by putting it down here. So I'm going to say from 1500 to infinity, but really that gives me my value at 1500 when I evaluate my integral. So I integrate and I solve and I get 2,000 as my final answer. So that would be my conditional mean for a continuous random variable. So once again, if the connect time is 1,500 milliseconds, then the expected time to be authorized is 2,000 milliseconds. So this is that example we did with the connecting to the server and then validating you as a user. But if I connect at 1,500 milliseconds, then it will take me 2,000 milliseconds to be authorized. Okay, so that's it for this segment of joint probability distributions.